Welcome back lighting friends, Robert from Pathway Connectivity Solutions talking about the Cognito Lighting Control Console. And in the last video we talked about Knockout and how you can remove information that is inadvertently recorded in your cues or your memories. This time what we're going to do is talk about what you're seeing on the screen in the select mode, what the lights are actually up to, who you is controlling them, and what this little eye icon means in the lower right hand corner of the screen. So first off, when you are in the select task and you are looking, we've seen in other videos how you can zoom in and out and you can page between different uh, banks of lights and all the rest of it. Um, but what, when you're running cues, and I'm just going to run some cues here, there's lots of different colors happening on the lights. Now you may notice um, some of the lights have a blue ring around them, some of them have a magenta ring around them, and some of them have like a green ring around them. And what that means is um, the lights that actually are going up in level. So if we start black here, looking at channel two, we can see if I advance into from the preset queue, if I advance into the next queue, into She Sings, what happens is that light went up in level. So we use blue to show that the light increased in level. We think blue to the sky. Then as we carry on, we also see that if a light goes down in level, it's green. And with that, I always think grass is green, down to the ground, going down green. And there's also these purple ones, which means the light has not changed. And if you're familiar with other theatrical lighting consoles, you may have heard the term tracking. That means that this level of 80% from this light hasn't changed. Uh, since the last cue. So if I back up a cue from the bass player, if I back up into She Sings, you'll see that light is at 80%. And as I move forward, it just tracks at 80%. The other things that you might see going on is the little icons inside of the light. Now, the, just like the four buttons, when you select a light, you have intensity, color, position and shape buttons, which are the same in control, intensity, color, position, and shape. You can see that this light's intensity has changed. And we know that because it's not purple, it's, it's cyan in color. Um, we can also see that its shape has changed, but we really don't know what it is changed to yet. It could be a zooming, could be iris, could be shutters, could be gobos, we don't know. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, and in this one here, it's just the intensity that's changed. Now, if I advance another cue here, um, we can see here, although the light has remained up in intensity, none of the attributes, intensity, color, position, or shape, have changed. Therefore, all the little icons go away. So, let's just release this guy out. And let's look at one other special thing. On light number three here, you see it has DL. Now if we look at our visualizer, we can see this light here is the front lead. And look, our lead uh, is up. And what that is telling us is that it has been desk locked. And some other lighting consoles might call this parking um, or turning it off uh, from the controller. But we call it desk lock. And the way you can look at that is if you go into control, and you go under intensity and you go to the advanced, you will actually see that the light is in fact desk locked, which means that it is not being controlled by cues or memories, or even uh, when you run it up and down in level, it is actually locked at a level. And what level would that be? Well, this is where we're going to get into what this little I button does. So with the light number three selected, if I hit I for info, what you'll see is a completely different screen. And at the bottom, you will see that it is desk locked at 50%. So light number three, which is my front lead, which is a generic 8-bit dimmer, which happens to be patched at universe 1, DMX slot 31, it is locked at 50%. We can also look, this is just looking at our selected lights. We can also look at the locks for the show and we can see that one light is desk locked. Now zero lights are tech locked. If you're using the I 
iPad or iPhone Neato app, you can tech lock them as a technician from a re remote um, position using Wi-Fi. But right now, zero of them are tech locked and the outputs are not locked either because you can actually lock a DMX slot. Um, there's other things, another button here, media, will tell you about uh, how many different versions of this show file there are or uh, what's on the hard drive. And then in the show itself, there's a little summary saying that this show has five playlists in total. There's 39 cues in total, three memories and 32 uh, uh, memories in three, in three memory pages. So that is looking at the selected light. Now let's just turn off I info which is here and you can see that we have number three which is captured so if I release that out by hitting the release button then I have nothing captured so what if we hit the I button now we can't look at the selected lights so if we just press I I want you to notice in the bottom left hand corner of every single light cell gives a number now typically the number will give its intensity. But if you press I with nothing selected, what this number in the bottom corner is, is its DMX patch. What address, what DMX slot is it addressed to? So if I select that light and I hit I, you can see this is address 70. Now in an earlier video, you heard that you can press these buttons here by holding down the shift key and you can get to the next light so currently we're looking at light number one if i hold down the shift key these buttons turn into my next light so this goes to light number two which is also the stage left vl1k made by very light addressed at 51 and then i could go on and there's my lead front which is addressed at 31 move on and there's my bass player's front light addressed at DMX 32 and so on so let's release this out and what I'm going to do is looking at our visualizer now let's just have um, a look if we're looking at our left playback playback I have a my first cue in the list here is the bicolored psych so if I just triple click on that I will go to it and you see I have colors along my psych and some front lights and oh there's my uh, lead singer's light which is uh, desk locked let's just go and fix that because we're no longer in rehearsals so I will select her light go into control undesk lock it and there it goes out so now she's just backlit so now we've learned a little bit about what's going on there. But, oh, look at this busy light right here, number two. What's it up to? Well, it's got a change in color and a change in shape and a change in position. So if I select that light and press info now, I can actually see that this light, light number two, uh, it is actually in a library called Piano. For pan and also tilt is in the third library called piano and if I use this arrow here I could go on to my colors color a color B color C and I can see that they're in the library called amber so it looks like these things are setting up for a new queue um, and what they've done is they've actually moved in black because the intensity is not up uh, look at this the gobo has gone to a rotating spiral but if I go all the way back here, looking at its intensity, it doesn't have an intensity yet. Its value is at zero. So what is the value of the pan and tilt? Well, look at this. It's actually number two, the piano solo. Now, if I go back and look in play, I can see my second cue is the piano solo. So this is a little foreshadowing of what's happening in the next video, a discussion about moving black. The desk has done us a favor. And it has said, well, that light is going to be used next in the next queue. I am going to actually go to Piano Solo and grab all of its values and put them there for us. So when you hit the play button here, you'll actually see there's our rotating gobo in amber on the piano. So now let's go look at it again. And we can see now 
that we are in the um, the source is coming from the main show. Now the main show is the name of the playlist. On my left playback, I have selected main show. Um, so that is my source. The source item is the piano solo, which happens to be the Q piano solo. And its library, we are using the library, position three, piano, and we're using color one, amber. And the real value that's coming out of that is 42 degrees and 24 degrees of tilt. 42 degrees of pan. And to get amber, we've mixed color A, B, and C to this value of red, this value of green, this value of blue. Now a little word about the colors that you're seeing here. All of these attributes are blue and they will mimic the same colors that I talked of earlier. Cyan being uh, levels that go up if we're looking at intensity or down if it's green or purple if it's tracking. But when it's an attribute, it will be blue instead of cyan because we, it doesn't matter if it goes up or down. So if I go into the next cue, looking at light number two here, um, this is our big finish. You can see it on the visualizer. There's an effect happening on the uh, back psych. Um, well, that might be interesting to look at in itself. I haven't shown you that. So if I, uh, if I actually select somebody from the psych and I grab its info, we can actually look at the effect value here, seeing it's a rainbow and we can see the value that is going out to stage. So that, that's another row in this list to look at. But again, its values change, so they're blue. Um, let's go back to our light number two. And uh, if we were to look at a value where they don't change, going into the next queue, which is the big finish, all of these attributes are tracking, and that's why they're purple. So you can have blue, meaning that uh, they are uh, changing in this queue. Purple or magenta, you can call it, uh, meaning that they haven't changed when this queue advanced. And if you release them out, you will see values in gray, which is their default value. Uh, uh, and everything's dark here. Uh, and there's one other level that could come from a memory. So I have a memory here that will bring up a ballyhoo right around that singer. And they come in uh, amber color because that's the color that we see here, yellow, in this case, for the intensity. But when you look at its attributes, they are amber, saying that they are coming from a memory. So that's a lot about colors and uh, display and symbols on uh, the select screen and the info screen. Uh, next time I'm going to go into more detail on what I touched on today, which is the move in black feature of Cognito. And after that, we will go look at what this coffee filter means uh, so you can filter out the selection screen so you know exactly what you're looking at. So I hope you join me again. I'm Rob from Pathway Connectivity Solutions.